child who came with almost daily events. She would have these jerks in her upper limbs, uh, sometimes on the left, sometimes on the right, and they would uh, last for uh, a few minutes and then she would go back to normal. She had been on Malproate for several years. So she, with no effect, in spite of being on Malproate, there was no effect. And otherwise she's a developmentally normal child, normal looking child. Clinical, next, next one. There's no significant history. Clinically she had normal stature, the no dysmorphic features, no focal signs, everything was normal. Next one. So we just did the regular things. So the next, uh, we got a calcium of 6.1 and a magnesium of 1.7, both of which are below normal limits. Calcium is very much below. So she was actually having hypocalcemic tetany, which, which had been mistaken for partial seizures and had been treated on valproate, never been given calcium, never been given vitamin D, never been investigated to find out what exactly was the reason for her having these events. Uh, her EEG was also surprisingly normal at the time. Next one. So subsequently we did uh, a parathormone level as well, which was very high. Uh, and an MRI was not done mainly due to financial reasons. And a CT brain was requested after we got the parathormone level to be very high. And the next one please. That's the CT, which, was, um, which shows several areas of heavy calcification in both all that is calcification. So bilaterally you've got large areas of calcification throughout the brain. Next one. So, so we made this uh, diagnosis of pseudo hypoparathyroidism because in spite of being a um, high parathyroid, her calcium was still very low. So the endocrinologist was involved. They started uh, calcium supplements and uh, high dose of uh, 125 cholecalciferol and she's doing very well now. She's completely seizure free. She's, um, I'm not sure what is the prognosis for the calcification in the brain. There is some literature that says that it can go down with treatment, but only time will tell. But she's doing very well. Her calcium's come up to 8.5, I think the last time we checked it. So this is just to reiterate that everything that shakes is not epilepsy. You could say that. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I have come across that very often. And clobazam is very often used for febrile convulsion prophylaxis as well. So um, it's a short acting anticonvulsant which acts pretty much as soon as you give it. So that might be the rationale behind starting clobazam. Certainly in the UK, we never used it. Um, I'm not familiar with using it even in my patients, even if I need to, you know, monitor them for seizures. If I need to start anti-epileptics, I would rather start the right drug straight away rather than buying time. But that's exactly what they're doing. They're just buying time by starting a, a short-acting, um, you know, quick-acting anticonvulsant. Because obviously with Valproate or any other anticonvulsant, you need to build up the levels slowly. But with Frisium, you, you know, you just straight away you bang them on the right dose and it's effective pretty much immediately. Card number TN101667. 
Yeah. You're supposed to, I mean, it's abstracting the various things. Okay. So, the video clipping was the actual seizure that I have shown you. I was not able to see movements. The movements usually, they follow a particular pattern, repetitive pattern. Like, you know, no, no, no. This is never seen in similarly this kind of movement. Could be, but then... No, the pseudo seizure that he had, we actually witnessed it. He was fully conscious, he came to casualty, having collapsed in my OP, he was taken to the ER, and he was just fully conscious, he was just doing that, that in a cyclical manner with all four limbs and he was responding to I agree, I agree with you. No, the, uh, what I'm trying to bring to the audience is mm -hmm. when there is an organic growth, like our Treat that first, yes. and this academic performance is going down, I would be hesitant to... It's always common to have a mixture of seizures, pseudo seizures, they don't occur alone. I have seen a few cases which occur alone. There is a reason behind it. But here, is it the reason or the cause for pseudosis? We are not able to say. No, we are not. If we have not done the MRI for that patient. I that patient, usually in petit mal, there is no indication. We don't, but more in this case, in that when case, the patient loses consciousness and falls down, but unlikely. He's in, not losing consciousness. No, 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 you said when they fell down and got up in the ER and made all no, the No, no, he, he fell down, but he was fully so, conscious. Possible. So, partial seizure still can be conscious. So, on that case, you know, I'll be able to be careful before. Labeling a child on as a as I no, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, in general, I never label uh, somebody as pseudo seizure yeah, yeah. unless it's completely. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I would. I would go in for a complete psychological assessment, mm -hmm. IQ assessment, educational. That assessment. boy actually had an IQ assessment. His IQ assessment was below average. Yeah. The other one is when the patient was treated for absence. He He's responded very well. Yeah. But how can a pseudo seizure go? If he continued to no, go, if he has any problem no, in the No, no, that was because we actually spoke to him. The psychologist spoke to him as well. And he actually admitted that he was just acting. And the third point against this is, absence is treated, still the patient has got pseudo seizures. Usually absence, it is brought out by the teachers or the mother whose eyewitness, yeah. he doesn't know. The patient himself he wouldn't, uh, know. wouldn't know that he has it. So he cannot mimic. Mm. Supposing he has seen a patient having a generalized convulsion, anybody, any letter, he would have he would try to, usually they uh, try hard to mimic and then fail miserably. That is the usual That's description. That's the usual, of yes. This particular child actually witnessed a seizure in school and decided that was a good way to go back home. So he actually came out with that history when the psychologist questioned him, he said, no, I just thought it would be a good good way to get away from school. So he actually admitted to the fact that he, he was those events, recently for the one month that he'd been having those so-called events, they're not actually seizures, he was just acting. And he actually admitted to that. So that's why I was very comfortable putting that. In general, pseudo seizures, I never label somebody as pseudo seizure unless I've ruled out organic causes. Make a last point. The speaker is very lucky. She has shown all cases she had success. Bhaskar no, Subramaniam no, Sai no. We are not that lucky in treating epilepsy cases. Madam, congratulations. I don't know whether choose only success cases or you are lucky. We are never so lucky with our epilepsy patients. I have my fair share of intractable seizures. I just thought it would be easier to get the easy ones here. But I'm sure I have got a few as well. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, madam, for an excellent presentation.